lay the weight upon the Lord? The word weight means expect. What do you expect today? What do you expect from God today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to expect the best that he has for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's wait on him. Okay? Thank you, Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew
exalted above all God. Hallelujah. And we
this is my first time to one of these Jewels of the King meeting, I think is what they call them. So I'm really not sure what the order is. <laughs> if there is one. Lots of people are the most out of order people there is anyway. <laughs> but I do know God wants to do something special today. Hallelujah. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, you made that statement earlier about wait upon the Lord. And yes. that word wait in the ancient Hebrew, I like what it means. It means to entwine yourself. Amen. If you want something from God today, you got to entwine with Him. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I don't think any of us traveled here today just to be in another church service. I know I didn't. And my precious wife, Paul, back there, she uh, made a super sacrifice to be here. She's so sick. She's so weak. So I know God's going to do something special. Amen. And I know she's not the only one. Bless at me later. Hallelujah. God's getting ready to do something great. That lady sitting right next to you, Robin. Honey, the hand of the Lord is upon you for good. God says to tell you I've got great things in store for you, for you'll raise up in your generation with the word of the Lord. Your steps are ordered of the Lord today. Fear not the way I'm going to lead you in the days to come. For I chose you before you were born. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I, I don't know a lot of you here, and that's okay, too. Some of you, I wish I didn't know. <laughs> Dennis, Russ, they know, they know I love them. Hallelujah. The kingdom and dominion has been given to the saints of the Most High. It is an everlasting one. I speak of shall never die. This covenant I made shall stand. Death is in the of my mild hand. And the mercy I shall pass over these I've tried. The seed that I preserved is now being seen upon the earth, and my glory rests on the saints of the Most High. Will the kingdom and dominion has been given to the saints of the Most High? It is an everlasting one. I speak of life, for ye shall never die. Covenant I've made shall stand. This is to know by my own hand, and with mercy I shall pass over these I've tried. This written of seed that I preserve now be seen upon the earth, and my glory rest on the saints of the most high. Hold on, time out. Y'all are way too comfortable. <laughs> Some of y'all think y'all did God a service showing up today. So you're kicked back. We're going to sing that again. And I want you to even, if you don't know, just, I guess, are the words up there? Yeah. Okay. Then y'all see the words? You can read? Don't make me go there. Amen. As we sing this, know that God is speaking a word to us today. This remnant seed. How many knows you're the remnant seed? Amen. And, I, and some of y'all have to correct me on this. Russ, Sabrina, Dennis, Sheila, and Paul. But I think last time around, I began, I think it was last Tuesday night on the thing, I began to talk about the remnant seed. In the, in the last verse of the book of Isaiah 6, it said, A remnant shall return and their substance will be in them. Amen. The very life of God will be in them. Hallelujah. How many knows that's what raised Lazarus from the dead? Oh, nobody wants to help me today. Amen. The Bible said Jesus cried in a loud voice, Lazarus come forth. And he spoke in the language of the day, which was Aramaic. How many knows it's not in what language you choose to speak. It's in the substance of God that comes out. 
And we have that substance in us. I want you to get up. We're going to sing it again. I want you to get up out of your seat. Find somebody. Hug them. Hug the ones you don't like the most. We're all sick. Don't be hugging people. The what? Don't be hugging people. We're all sick. Don't be hugging people, Russ said. They're all sick. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. High five We're going to sing it again and sing it under the Lord and sing it to each other. Are we ready? The kingdom's mine, dominion. Come on. God be given to the saints of the Most High. It is an everlasting one. I speak of life, for ye shall never die. This covenant I've made shall stand. This is a note by my own hand. And with mercy I shall pass over thee and I try. Remnant seed that I preserved is now being seen upon the earth, and my glory rests on the saints of the most high. Go hug somebody. Kingdom and dominion has been given to the saints of the most high. Hallelujah. It is an everlasting one. I speak of life for you. I'll never die. shall stand. Death is enough by my own hand and with mercy I shall pass over these I've tried. This remnant seed that i preserved is now being seen upon the earth and the glory rest on the saints of the most high. Come on.
There's a wonderful, joyful, peaceful spirit here today with a lot of healing flowing in it for a lot of people. Before I pray, I just want to say real quick, the Lord showed me to share this with you guys for whatever reason. When I was three or four years old, I had a dream, a vision that has stayed with me all these years, many, many years. And sometimes it just comes back very forcefully and God said, share it. I was... Uh, my mom was real tall and slender with long legs, and she moved very fast, nervous energy. So as a little child, you were just hanging on to her trying to keep up when she was walking. And she was walking in this dream, and my little brother and I, he was probably two, was following her. And we got to a mountain that was like the ones out here, like a mesa that's flat on top. But it was real, real tall. And she started climbing, and we were following behind her up this rock face, it was sheer rock face. And we climbed above the clouds, above the birds, everything. And when we got up there, she was going real fast and she was saying, keep up, keep up, come on, come on. And we got to the top and it was beautiful green lush land with trees and women and men picking fruit and, and working in wheat fields and things of that nature. It was based on fruit and things of the earth growing. And she kept going through those trees and I'm standing there thinking, this is really beautiful and peaceful and wonderful. We could stay here and just hang out here. Why is she still walking? And she keeps going through the trees and yelling, come on, come on, come on. And she'd disappear from sight and I'd have to try to race up to find her. My heart was scared, you know, as a kid. And we went to another area and there was beautiful waterfalls and river and birds and butterflies and flowers, but no people. And I was like, well, this is really nice. We could stay here. Let's just stay. This, this is peaceful, beautiful. Everything we need is right here. Let's stay here. She kept calling us on. Come on, come on, come on. And there were many realms, but as we went, we finally came to one that was white. And it was white mist. And you could see nothing, not even your hand in front of your face. And we kept walking, and I just followed her voice. I couldn't see her anymore. And suddenly, we come through the mist, and she was standing talking to a man. And he was in a long white robe with a purple sash, and I knew, and I didn't even know Jesus. She had never taught us about God. I'd never been to church, but I knew that was Jesus. And she was talking to him, and he was holding her hands, and they were face-to-face -face talking. And I knew out of respect, stay back and let them talk. But I've always, through my life, kind of wondered, what did that dream really mean? Why has it stayed with me so strong? But that's the day we're in right now. If you look back through all the realms of your life that you've walked, there's been some great comfortable places for you to stay. Amen. That you could have hung out and ate of that fruit and the produce that was being produced in that land. But now, God is taking us into a place where there's no landmarks. There's no signs. Nothing familiar. You follow the voice. And when you arrive, you're face to face with him. And it's a personal commune with him. Right here, heart to heart, one-on-one. -on -one. There's no religious hang-ups. There's no judgment. There's no governmental orders. There's no people there. There's none of the trappings of mankind that has held us prisoner and bond, bound to this earth anymore. It's just him. There was nothing else there. Purity and him. So for any of you wondering where we are in this day, that's where God is taking us. If you're feeling... You're walking into a lot of new changes in your life, a lot of things happening in your body, a lot of things happening in your families, in the world. That's where we're going. Is alone with him, eyes off the world, eyes off these issues. Let's go ahead and pray and praise God for this beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today. We are so ever grateful to you, Father. Maha, both spiritually and physically to be here joined with this body as one. We pray, Father, that you just flow amongst the people. And this word that you're going to deliver forth out of Genesis James goes into their heart like a seed that is planted. Maha, at their very core. That it flourishes in the days ahead and brings great fruit. From you, from the spirit realm, Father, nothing of this earth. We want nothing of this earth. We just want you. Let all the bondage fall of us, Father, and let us walk free, free into this day with you. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor and glorify you.
Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here. Amen. I, uh, I want to take just a little bit of time here right quick before I share with you what I feel like the Lord is sharing. I want to pray for a few people. Is that okay? Amen. You know, there's a lot of sickness that's hitting people. And when I first walked into this building, the Lord told me to stretch forth hands. And I want to start with Paul over here, okay? Lord, right now we just stretch forth our hands towards her. We ask that she be released of this sickness that has attached itself to her. We ask that you raise her up, Lord, immediately. Not in the days ahead, but immediately. Before this service is over, she's going to feel like a new woman. Lord, strength is going to be put into her body. All those elements that has attacked her body, her body's beginning to fight against it, Lord. And Lord, we just stand with her right now, and we hold for her in this healing that she needs right now in this hour. Amen? Amen. Gail, I want to just pray for you. I want to just, I want to release a healing into you. Okay, huh? Amen. This thing's been here too long. Okay? Father, I just thank you right now that you didn't show me these things in vain. And I ask that you just release her right now, Lord, into your glory, into your presence, into your power. And strengthen her before she leaves this building, Lord, that she comes sick, but she's going to leave a new woman. Amen? In her innermost being is going to rise up and begin to fight the elements that has attached itself to her body. And Father, I thank you and praise you right now. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. There's a greatness in God, isn't there? Tremendous greatness. Lord, I just right now, I lift Alice up. I ask that you begin to strengthen her. This dizziness that she is beginning to feel and experience, I pray that her head clears up and she be able to see and, and without, with clarity. Amen. And Father, I just stand with her in this hour for that purpose that be brought about in her life. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I don't know why this ain't in the center, but I'm going to put it in the center. <laughs> like I said, it is really uh, good to be here. I, I really am expecting God to do some great things in our lives today. Amen. Not that he hadn't done it already. Right, right. He's done many great things with us. Amen. I want to speak to you something a little bit out of order. How's that? <laughs> so how many of you know sometimes you got to get out of order to get in order? <laughs> hey, you understand what I'm saying? I want to talk to you about a little bit about the season of God. Okay? Everybody, there's a, there's a thing that you think that you got to be in season all the time. I found most of my walk has been out of season the majority of the time. But that's what God's doing. And God spoke to me just recently here, Allison. He said, in order to bring the next season, there has to be a people that will get out of season. Because it's the out of seasons that brings the new season in. Amen? But see, that's when stuff is happening inside you that's not seasonal. Or in your life that's not seasonal. I mean, you know, we're not bearing fruit all the time. Amen? Most of the time we're dying. You understand what I'm saying? Our, our, our elements, our understanding, our thinking. I, I've, always aggra I've always been aggravated. I've seen people settle down in one simple truth and spend their whole life there. And I thought, how simple would that have been? And by the time I get one truth established in my heart and in my spirit, God changes the whole order. And here I go again. And I learned that I had to forget what I just learned to go on and learn what he's telling me today. Most of my experiences, Alice, with God has been not scriptural. That may bother some people. 
But how I many you know the scripture is in the word of God? How I many you know the word of God is a living organism? Amen. Amen. That breathes and moves. It has its being. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because see, you can get, you. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you walk this walk. And I don't care if you've been here 4,900 years. Okay? And you were with God when he created the world. When you get into scriptures, you will form your imagination. I don't care who you are. And out of scriptures, we have formed many imaginations of what sonship is, what kingdom is, what love is, what relationships is, what union is. Can you hear that? Yes. We have formed our imaginations out of that. And how many of you know that 99.9% .9 of the time we've been wrong with the imaginations that we pulled out of scripture? Amen. For sure. Almost all the time. So, guess what? That's, that's why we're all messed up. <laughs> but I mean, you know, God, God don't have a problem with that. We the one has problems with it. We do. How many of you remember Micah in Scripture? Old Testament prophet. Remember they were going to go up to war, the king was. And he said, listen, how will we do this? Spirits came before God. Read the scripture. He said, how will you do it? He said, we'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. You know what the, you know what the Lord said? He said, go. Did you hear that? Now see, we want to blame all this on the devil. Most Christians need the devil to justify themselves yeah. for getting to do what they're doing. Because I can blame the devil, then I can continue to live like I live. Amen? Amen. God allowed that lying spirit to go, and guess what? They began to prophesy to the children of Israel. And they said, well, how will we do it? And he said, with these horns, we'll go up and kill them all. Mm. How many of you have ever been there? Hear God speak, and then you interpret it. Right. <laughs> I remember one time God said, you're going to preach to the worlds. And I thought, wow, there'll be crowds everywhere. Multitudes <laughs> of people. All right. <laughs> I started out big. I started out a church full. I ended up with none. Yeah. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Our imaginations. The way we interpret scripture. Well, I have nothing wrong with scripture. What I have wrong with is our concepts of it. And what we think it is. That's what I have a problem with. I remember one time Alice God said, Son, you've read that black till you about wore it out in there. Have you ever read that white? I said, no, Lord, I haven't. I said, how do you read that white? He said, listen to me. I mean, you know, there's more white in your Bible than there is black letters or red letters. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying all this because when I started walking with God alone, me and Him, it wasn't what I thought it would be. Yeah. Uh, right. See, I had my imagination in Scripture like the Charismatics like the word of faith. I've been through all those ranks. I've been through every rank you can name. Baptist even. Been through all of them. Started out in the Baptist church. Started out in charismatic. Word of faith. All those things. Kingdom. Sonship. Right. Amen? Amen? We all got our own image and understanding of that. And we have formed it through preachers. Right? Right? And we informed it through scripture. Right. Correct? Yes. And I want to tell you we're all wrong. Yes, right. You right. There ain't but one right. That's right. Can you hear me? Yes. And he will always be right. Yes. 
You know, we hold the scripture like it's God. Do you know there's over a thousand something misquotations and misinterpretations in any Bible that you want to read? That's hard for some of us to swallow, isn't it? And yet we call it the Word of God. The Word of God don't miss the mark, people. When the Word of God is truly spoken, it hits dead center. You hear me? So there's mismanaged scripts everywhere. Right? And we hold to it like it's the Holy Grail. I know this is probably a little different, okay? But follow me, I'm going somewhere. So God began to take me outside that. And I began to experience stuff that I couldn't answer with Scripture. And it didn't happen the way Scripture came to me. Amen? Like your life being turned absolutely upside down when you thought it ought to be great. I'm believing in God. I'm going to church every day. I'm paying my tithes. I love everybody. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and it was like that in the feast that I was in. I mean, you know what a feast is. Feast is something you eat, right? And when you eat that, that feast becomes you. Right? So there's three feasts listed in scriptural. Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. How I many of you know there's a feast beyond tabernacles? We all got hung up in tabernacles like we did in Pentecost. Yes. Yeah. Gotta be more. There's more. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes, so you so you put that together, then were periods in your life when you feasted in that area. I still remember the day that God called me. That was Passover. It was a glorious time, Alice. I sat in the middle of a church that I'd never even been to. And this thing was packed. And the preacher got up, and I don't even know what he said. He might have said three, three words. I don't know. I couldn't tell you what he said today. I sat in the middle of church and began to just cry. I disrupted the whole service. <laughs> like, when I cry, I cry. It ain't this. <laughs> I mean, it's a... <laughs> and I disrupted that whole church service, and the church service ended, and everybody hit the altar, and I was still crying. That was Passover for me. It was a grand time. I could have lived there forever, Alice. And the next feast I went into was Pentecost. And I thought that was the greatest feast I'd ever had. And I learned that Pentecost was more than a tongue. Most people experience Pentecost, they still haven't got past Shonda yet. How many know there was more poured out there that day? It wasn't a Shonda language that was poured out. You know what it was? It was a language in the spirit that every man could understand in his own tongue. It was a spiritual language poured out. And it may sound just like me talking sometimes. And it gave people power to do what? To walk around in Shonda? Walk around and brag about our Shondas? While the world going to hell in a handbag. Amen. It was more than that. It was dunamis power. Power to change inside each other. Can you hear me? Power to, to look at your brother. And lay down your life. In order for them to change. Whether they're right or whether they're wrong. Most people that's preaching today. That's preaching. All men be saved don't have a clue what they're preaching. Do you hear me? And I believe in the salvation of all. But it ain't a simple magic wand. 
Can you hear me? In order for this whole body right here to be all saved, it's going to have to walk through some things. Right. It's an ongoing progressing. Yes. Right. It isn't that I'm saved and it's all over. Hallelujah. Right. I am being saved and reborn every day. Yes. Every time that God shows up in my life differently than what I've once known him, guess what? I have to be born into that day again yes. to where I can see him again. Yes. You got many more births coming, people. Many more. So don't be sitting on your hotches. It's time to move. Amen. Move into the things of God. God's moving a people today. And the reason he's moving a people is because the day of the Lord is at hand. Do you know, what are you really... What do you really think about when you think about the manifestation of the sons of God? What, what, what's in your image about it? Are you looking for something to blast out of the heavens? Like we used to think the rapture was? Have you ever really just sat down and contemplated about yourself and thinking that you're a son of God, a true manifest son of God? And because you're not manifesting miracles and healings and all those great things that you think the Son of God ought to be doing, that you're not the Son of God? Right. Come on. You're a Son of God in the capacity. That's, that's, what, that's, that's what God is doing today. You're a Son of God according to the capacity and the calling that God's got on your life. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and whether you ever do what I do, you're still in your calling and you're obedient unto God and that is truly a manifestation of a son of God when you're obedient in what God has called you to do regardless of what manner that he chooses to use you in. Yeah. That's true. If we could all just come to that right. and let everybody be a hand and everybody is going to be a foot, a foot and everybody is going to be an eye, an eye, an ear, an ear. And we can learn to flow and function in that capacity. It would change things. Amen. 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 Reconciliation. It's not loving those that because they agree with you. That's what we have termed reconciliation. Well, if they agree with everything I'm preaching, then I'm reconciled to them. Wrong. Reconciliation is being reconciled to a man that is in total error in everything he's doing. But I'm still reconciled to him. I still see him as God sees him. I don't see like a Pharisee and look at a, look at a woman caught in the very act of adultery. No, I'm a son of God. I write in that dust. Right? I don't sit and accuse and make accusation. Oh, they don't preach like me. They don't believe like me. Who cares? Right. Yeah. Come on. Nobody. Anybody without error in your doctrine right now, stand up. <laughs> yeah, right. Cast the first stone at me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Throw your rock at me. <laughs> yeah. You understand what that means? Throw your scripture at me. <laughs> Reconciliation is loving you when you're wrong. Or when you're right, or when you're on top of the world, or you're losing everything. Amen. Amen. And it's not judging you saying, hey, you're not in the will of God. So that's why all this is happening to you. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, no. Right? Right. Right. If something ain't happening to you, I'm going to worry about you. Right. <laughs> if you ain't been drugged down nine miles of bad road, I'm going to worry about you. Serving God don't get you out of nothing, huh? Serving God will get you in it. <laughs> How could we ever be considered overcomers if we overcome if we're not, never challenged to overcome something? Being an overcomer says it's not your situation changing. Can you hear that? Well, that's a true word for y'all. I don't know what I'm talking to you about. But being an overcomer Come is not 
changing your situation. Being an overcomer is I'm overcoming regardless of the situation. Nothing can take that away from you. That's right. Amen? Amen. Nothing can. But see, here we are in this illusion. Here we are, wrapped up and bound up in these scriptures, right? That says it shows God delivering about everything, everything, right? Right? What about what about all the ones after that? I'm gonna read some white to you, okay? Is that all right? Here's the white. God told the man, he said, go and sin no more. Right? Here's the white part. Did he go and sin anymore? Yes. There's your white part. See, I'm more interested in what Scripture don't say than what it does say. See, we look at all these other things that's happened this way, this way, this way, this way, and we take it for granted that that's all that's happened. What about all the white part in between them happenings? What was going on? Can you hear that? What was happening? It was to bring you to the next level. That's right. Most of it people don't see. Most of it don't see when you're in your house and you're falling down in tears and your children that's going astray and you don't know if they're going to live or they're going to die. Can you hear that? Yeah. Most of the time, you don't know if you're going to raise up and have enough to even pay your electric bill or have a dollar for gas to get to work. Yeah. Right. Don't tell you that, does it? <laughs> That's the white part that God is beginning to bring the people to know. Yeah. You understand the white part, don't you? Yeah. It ain't just a white page that's enlightenment. God's enlightening us. Yeah. To who he's like Amen. and what he does. You mean, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Well, it's, it's like, well, God wouldn't allow me to go through that. Oh, yeah, he will. Uh-huh. <laughs> he loves you enough to let you go. Yes, he does. Can you hear that? Yes. True love, true, true love sees you dying and does something about it. Human love. She's you dying to try to get you out of it. Mm-hmm. Did you hear me? That's right. I didn't hear many amens on that one. <laughs> <laughs> True honest love. One of the first thing I had to learn about drug addiction from my children, that most of y'all know me, and know I had two children that were bound. You know whether they're going to live or die. One bound on marijuana, they bound on heroin and everything else. I didn't know whether they were going to live or die. Matter of fact, I told my wife at one time, I said, they'll, they'll come to the truth on the other side. Can you hear that? But the truth of the matter is this. Whether they lived or whether they died, they were still in God's purpose. And I had to come to grips with that. And you're talking about something hard. But see, that's only the why. That's what the why will teach you. That's what it will let you go through to teach you something about God that you've never known him. I know God to the degree right now that I would have never known him if my path hadn't went where it went. Amen. 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 Now this is really going to sound funny. As a matter of fact, this is really going to sound weird. And my wife is going to springe. But you can ask her. All of a sudden, I got to the point one time, because every time God would take me deep down in the, in the bowels of the well, I would come forth bleached white every single time. And every time that I would come forth bleach white, the situation was still staring at me. But something changed here. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 
And God done that for about 10 year period where it was just me, my wife, and God. And I was pastoring one of the biggest churches in Salisaw at that time, and it went away. It wasn't nothing for us to take up twenty, thirty thousand dollars on Sunday morning. I had doctors, lawyers. Can you hear that? And God took it away. When the devil destroyed it, God took it. Right, right. He had other plans for me. Yes. Matter of fact, I had some of the biggest names in Tulsa wanting me to come and join them. Jerry, Chris, Rick, Godwin, all them guys. And I won't forget it. Alice and God shared a scripture and said their cover is too short. Found in Isaiah. Couldn't go. But I said all this for this reason. I told my wife when I come out of that last part and I see my daughter being delivered and she was being delivered all the time. This is a very important point I'm fixing to make for you. How many of you know that God will speak something and it'll get worse? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It started getting so bad that Gary would speak to my son. My son would say, Gary, I need to go leave the room. Because he said, I don't want him to say a thing to me, Dad. Every time he does, hell breaks loose. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But every time God spit, it'd get worse. And I kept, it got to the point where I really wondered if that was God I was really hearing. Right. Mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. But then all of a sudden when I seen God begin to do it, and this is what God talked to me about. He said, the reason you didn't see it at the beginning, because I was dealing with nations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. legions. Yes. And he said, to deal with nations and legions, there has to be a new world created. Wow. See, some of you are not understanding why your children's not being delivered or turning around. God's doing it, but it's doing it unseen because there has to be a brand new world created within them. Their whole nature has to change, yeah. and that's not done with a magic wand. Right. Wow. That is a process yes. of bringing it in. See, God spoke. The world that we, I don't know how we come into this concept where we just think things is Zappo. <laughs> right? When God spoke, how many of you know from the time God spoke and it happened could have been millennials? <laughs> Genesis chapter 1 could have took millions and billions of years to happen. Right. How many of you know what God's purpose was there? Creating who? Mm -hmm. Not just the elements, but creating who? Mm -hmm. Man. Right. So in order to create this <laughs> new man, we get frustrated because we've done it for 40 years and there's no change. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, God is in no hurry. Time's created for us, not him. Right. Amen? Amen? True, true. So when I realized that, it brought me out of Hades. Mm -hmm. Brought me out of that horrible pit. What brought me out? Understanding. Enlightenment. What does it say about when the light comes? Darkness has to flee. Yes. The situation hadn't changed at that time. But I understood in my heart and my spirit. I knew what God was doing. Yes. And that relieved me even though I still didn't see it immediately. Amen? Amen? Amen. So that's what I was fixing to say. It's fixing to make my wife cringe right here. I got out of them situations for quite a long time where I wouldn't go down in there so deep. But I got the longing to go deep. Oh, no. <laughs> Can you hear what I'm trying to say to you? I got the longing to go deep. You know why? Because of the dividends that was paying when I learned what God was saying. Amen. Yes. Amen? Because I knew when God took me deep in darkness and everything, what was going to come out of that was a new life. Yes. A new enlightenment about my father. 
a due understanding of knowing what he's doing and what he's moving in the earth about. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Now that's what, that's out of season. Yeah. yeah. That's not a seasonal thing. Can you hear that? Paul said in the fourth chapter of the book of Corinthians, he said, I'm the man that is born out of due season. Yes, he did. Did you hear that? How many of you know that Paul brought a day in farther than the disciples did? Yeah. Did he not? Yeah. How did he do that? By being a man born out of due season. He brought the new season in because he was born out of season. Let me give you another example. I know you know this book, Esther, right? Everybody ought to know the book of Esther, right? Mordecai, right? The Jew that sat by the door that drove Haman mad. I mean, you know that's inside us right now. Mordecai and Haman's right here. Haman is always trying to hang Mordecai. Always trying to build a gallow for him. Right? Now watch this. Esther was sent there for a purpose. She didn't know the purpose. She had not a clue what was going to happen. But Mordecai said, go. And we'll find out what God's going to do. <laughs> Amen? Now, in this story we realize that Haman had... The, the, developed a plot with the king and already built the gallows. How many of you know, 90% of us today, if we'd see the gallows and say we're going to get hung on it, we'd give up. I watched the movie here just recently and the name of it was uh, East East, Easton, and it was about this Native American, which I'm a Native American, I can relate to that. And he was traveling with this woman, and he'd say some profound things that I just loved, and this is one thing he said. It, every time it looked like they were about to die, he would say, we won't know until the end what's going to happen. And every single time it looked like they was going to die after it happened, it didn't happen. You see my point? Here's, here is the next high-ranking order in the day of Esther. He was right next to the king. He gave orders and they happened. And he had already despised the plan to to hang Mordecai and all the Jews. Kill them. Now what about if Esther would have just stayed in the season? What would have happened? Here she is in the king's court, being taken well good care of. Everything's lovely. Sucking on grapes and playing harps. Right? That was a season. Mordecai told her, said, this is the day that you're here for. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying to you. This is the day that we're here for, people. Amen. Come on. What did he say? You must go into the king. It's not the season to go into the king. Do you realize if I go into the king that he'll kill me? Come on now. Oh, glory to God, I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. It's not seasonal for her to go see the king. The king is to bid her. And he said, if you don't go, all of our people's going to die. So she went. Knowing good and well, it could cost her her life. 
That's what God's asking today. Yes. Yes. This is going to cost you your life, people. Hallelujah. It ain't a maybe. I can prophesy to you today. It's going to cost you your life. It's going to cost you them doctrines that you have nourished so much. All them things that you hold so tight to that you are for sure that you're in truth with. <laughs> yeah, well, that ain't You right. know you're right. <laughs> it's going to cost you today if you hear his voice. She went in, and guess what? The king held this scepter up to her. That's right. If he hadn't, she would have died. It said that she took a hold of it, the top of it. Very powerful. She took a hold of the top of it, and when she did, you know what the king said? What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Esther didn't ask for gold and silver and help. Esther said, Oh, king, I'm going to hold a banquet. And I want you and Hammond to come. Hammond thought he was being, listen, oh, glory. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, Hammond. Hear me? Yeah. Oh, Hammond thought he was chief now, buddy. He's been invited to the greatest banquet that's ever been. Do you know what? You come thinking you're going to get this and you leave realizing that something died in you and you didn't get it at all. Right. <coughs> oh, glory. You come <coughs> expecting something, but you get something that's greater than what you expected. Yes. Amen? Amen? Yes. Because I'm not talking about a fleshly desire. Right. I'm talking something spiritual. Can you hear me? Now I watch old Hammond and he said, oh man, boy, oh, can you believe this? I'm going to speak tonight, sis. Dear Lord, baby, ask me to speak. <laughs> Hammond, I'm going to be right by the king and Esther wanted me to come. Amen. And guess what happened? Something got exposed. There's some things being exposed. Don't be afraid of exposure. Because yeah. if God's going to expose something, it's something that's killing you. Yes. And it needs to go. Yes. Yes. Amen? That's out of season. What happened next? The very plan that this old man devised wind up hanging himself. Yeah. Now, I will throw a scripture here. Evil will destroy itself. You don't have to worry about it. Amen? Amen? It'll take care of itself. Just let it go. Let it be. It'll destroy itself every time. Amen? Amen. So that's out of season. And what happened by Esther being bold enough to step out of season? She saved all of Israel. And Mordecai become wrapped in the king's robe. Yes. That's true sonship. Yes. Willing to risk your whole life to say something other. Whether it's right or whether it's wrong. You understand that? Same way, if you look all through scripture, you'll see that. There's a vein that flows through that. Moses, same way. Was it in season for him to step? In front of Pharaoh? Wasn't seasonal. I can name you every prophet, every true prophet of God will move out of season. Every single time. Why? To bring in the next season. Yes. Amen. And what I'm talking to you about moving out of season is. Out of season is those deep things down in your spirit. How many of you know that the seed is planted like a wheat seed in the barley seed that grows in the winter 
It's not normal for that to do that. It's an out of season seed. Seasonal things are like, you know, with nice and pretty. But there's other things that grows in dead winter. And most of it you cannot see. And when that, when that begins to grow within you, out of those seasons, it brings in the next season of this generation. Yeah. And it brings us into that season. And I don't know about y'all, are you satisfied with the season you're in? No. Hmm. I'm not. I want to move into the things of God. Amen? Amen? Regardless of the cause. Yes. I've lost it all before. I can lose it all again. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. I don't think there's a person here that hasn't done that. Mm -hmm. Hadn't been there. Right. If you're truly called of God. Yeah. That's the purpose of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Amen? Now, with that thought, I'm going to leave you with this. There will never be a manifestation of the sons of God, without you. It's impossible. Right. It is an absolutely impossibility to have a manifested son of God without a human being. Right? right? So it's not going to break out of the sky. Or it's going to be no magic wand. It's going to be all those seasons that's happening in you that nobody sees. And the manifestation of the Son of God isn't what we think it is. It isn't someone glowing in the dark. No, no. Amen? Amen. I have met many manifestations of God, oh, yes. sons of God, that has done something for me that they didn't, they didn't have no rhyme or reason to do it. They just done it, and I've never seen them again the rest of my life. And I realized then that it was a son of God that visited me. Yes. No recognition, no glorification. Right. Nobody said, hey, ain't that a son of God great over there? Right. <laughs> Amen? Yes. That's a true manifestation of the son of God that we flow in the obedience of right where God has us. And when he says move, we move. Yes. 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 Amen? Amen? Amen. Have you enjoyed reading the white? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's keep reading that. <laughs> the white is good, isn't it? Yes. It's good. So don't be afraid to listen to that. Yes. Yes. I was walking up the hill one day. And I, I, was, I was sitting there and I was in dilemma. And I've told this story before. You didn't know it. And, and the, the, the anointing came up when they preached. There wasn't nobody around to preach. I was in the middle of a hill on a flint rock road, and my cows was over here, and I started preaching, and they all come to me. <laughs> they needed that word. He said, there they are. I preached for almost an hour to them cows. <laughs> them cows never bat an eye. They stick their eyes right on the cattle. I don't know if they thought I was crazy or what. Probably. But it was almost like, and it wasn't almost, they could understand what I was saying. They were, I mean, I mean, they just gathered and hovered right there. Forty head. I had the biggest congregation I had a long time. <laughs> 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 Amen. 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 But see, I, I, I've seen God do many, many things. I've seen God raise dead. I've seen him do a lot of things. Right. I've seen him heal blind. I've seen him heal ears. I, I've seen him heal scab on skin. But... What I'm trying to tell you is all those things are great, and they're great when you need them and all that, but that's not what God's doing in this day. He's bringing forth the people in his image. Yes. Yes. And regardless if you ever see any of that, it don't matter. Right. That's right. Amen? Yes. Amen? So let's don't get focused on that. Let's stay focused on him. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. What's it say? Seek ye first. The kingdom and his right standing. Amen. And then all these others yeah. has to follow. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that true? Yes. That's pretty true. It's him. That's right. How I many of you know that most people have chose, chose scripture over him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
said, you read the scriptures daily. And in them, you think you have life. But it's not there. But it's not there. And you won't come to me. Yes. <laughs> what do you think about all the other things that was written about? Where do you think we're going to hear all the other things that was written about him that books that could not, world could not contain it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with that one? Yeah. Huh? The disciples said if it was written, the things that it had done, the world could not contain what had been written. Where are you going to read that at? In one place you can read that. That's in him. Amen? Amen. It's one thing I've always appreciated about Alice. She will step out. Amen. She's not afraid to step out Amen. of context of scriptures. Right. And speak what God is saying to her in spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's the ones that God is calling today. Amen. That will step out and say what he's saying. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. I have nothing wrong with scripture. God quote, God has shown me stuff in scripture all the time. Not, you know, I, I said this for a while back. I said, always people will take you out of context. No matter what you say. Have you ever noticed that? I was preaching on these same lines. And then it all got out that men don't believe in scripture no more. Uh-huh, yeah. I never said that. I just think God's bigger than Scripture. Amen. And if you're God's yes. not, He's a pretty small God. Right. Yeah. Amen? Amen. I learned through Scriptures. Yeah. But there's more learning than that. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I said something else, too. And I'll probably get in trouble here real bad. I said there's a day coming beyond grace. Well, that tore some thing down. We all wanted to keep that. <laughs> Y'all looking at me like that deer in the headlock. Yeah. Now, let me explain what I said. A day beyond grace. Didn't say grace was not going to be taken away, did I? Did I? Did I say, I don't believe in grace? I said there's a day beyond grace. You know what that day is? Day of obedience. Yes. yes. Jesus didn't say, I'm the Son of God by the grace of God. He said, I'm the Son of God by the obedience of God. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that not right? Yeah. Right. Right. Didn't say it was going to be taken away. It will always be there. But I mean, you know, most people have done grace like they have the devil. They've used it for an escape go, not to become obedient. Right. right. Yeah, right. Yes, true. Amen. Yeah. Same way with, it's swallowed up. The day of grace is swallowed up. Yes. It'll always be there. But it's swallowed up into the day of obedience. That's right. Can you hear that? Yes. Just like, Good Lord. Good Lord. Just like Passover and Pentecost. They're still there. Mm -hmm. But they were swallowed up with tabernacles. Right? right? Yeah. And the next feast will be swallowed up with all three of them in gathered in it. Yes. They're not done away with. They're swallowed up into the next thing God's doing. Right. Is this okay? Yes. All right? Yes, it is. Now, now y'all kind of lost that deer in the headlock. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. It's been a blessing to share with you. It has truly been a blessing. Amen? Hopefully, God has dropped things in our spirit. Hopefully he's challenged us, huh? I love to be challenged. I mean, you know, my wife one time, she was real mad at God. I oh, know none of y'all have never been mad at God. <laughs> she was real mad at God, and I picked her up for lunch, and boy, she was all about looking at her. I, was, I said, babe, I see you're not supposed to get over that. She said, what? <laughs> I said, you're going to lose that battle. What are you talking about? I said, you're mad at God. Well, she said, oh, and just dropped her head, and Time we got through lunch, she was a whole different person. He said, You're absolutely right. And I said, You're going to lose it. God loves a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Amen. 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 Paul, I said, God raised me up, huh? Yes. I see strength being poured in you. Oh, yeah. Amen? Yeah. Honey, you got a beautiful spirit. Yes. 
you got a teachable spirit. Yes. You didn't resist them at any time. You questioned them, but you didn't resist. Hallelujah. Totally different. You understand that? And for that, God's going to reward you. Praise God. In the days ahead, God's going to open up in you himself like you've never seen before. Yes. Praise Things God. that you've been asking for years is going to become clear. Things that you have wondered about is going to be open to you so clear. And you're going to sit there in your seat. I see you sitting there in your seat saying, how could I miss this? It's so simple. I see that for you. Amen? Amen. I can't wait to see what God's going to do for you. You too, sir. You have a really teachable spirit. And that's what God's looking for in this day and this time. Is this your wife or girlfriend or daughter? Girlfriend. (laughs) 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 It's been a honor to be here with you. It really has. And I really mean it with all my heart. You know, when I say something, I, I really mean it. I don't know you've never seen me. But how many of you know that because I've never seen you or I've never been around you, have I? If I, if I do, I forgive, me, forgive me for not remembering. But to my knowledge, I hadn't had it. But you know what? I know you. Do you understand that? I mean, I absolutely know y'all. You're not, you're not a stranger to me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And thank you for allowing me this time. I'll honor it. I really do. I'll honor anybody that give me time. <laughs> Amen. This young man right here, God's got a calling on your life. Yes, he does. A deep calling in your life. Praise God. Deeper than you have realized. Oh, yeah. And over the next few months, it's going to be revealed to you. Okay? God's got some places for you. God's got some people already reserved in the heavens. You understand that? I'm not talking about you going up there. There are some places reserved for you in the heavens right now waiting on you. Waiting for God to develop you to where he's going to send you. So do not fret and don't worry about it. Because in the next few months you're going to begin to see this clearly. And you're going to be walking, okay? And when you get there, this is really what, man, I see it. When you get there, you're not going to really know what to say, but in that moment that you need it, you'll speak it. So don't come with premeditation. Come with openness. Okay? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I'm trying to quit. I really am. Also, you want to come and say something here in the meantime while I'm here? Yeah, I do. Okay, you come around while I'm here. I'm going to get out of the way. Who? Jerry. Jerry's left. Hey, Gary. Don't be pulling any fast ones. You're fixing to get it. Hey, true pioneer. Yeah. 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 We're here today. Amen. 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 Because she had the boldness to step out and say beyond what the norm or the season was saying. Amen. And I'm proud to be joined to her. Amen. God bless. Seemed like Dennis and I kind of moved together in the spirit. The Lord's been giving me some off the wall stuff. He, I had surgery on my brain, and um, I uh, had breast cancer, uh, restless leg, all these terrible diseases, and my pride hit with the 
Yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> when I would get out in public, I felt like people were feeling sorry for me and yeah. saying, see there, all these years she preached life and look at her. Yeah. Everything that's wrong with her, she's just an old woman. But God told me, he said, I shut you in. Amen. And when you come out, yes. you'll speak as me. Amen. Amen. We've been uh, a little confused over the years about what we're here for, right. what we're supposed to do. We yeah. have. We fought the devil. <laughs> well, I don't know how many years. Blamed everything on the devil. <laughs> God knows exactly where the devil is. Amen. His demise doesn't depend on us. In fact, he's not going to go anywhere. Right. He created him to be a destroyer. Yes. Right. And a smith that blows the fire. Yes. Right. And he created to try the hearts of men. That's right. He didn't, God didn't lose control of the devil. He knew where he was all the time. Amen. Right. Amen. True. He knows where he is now. Yes. And I'm not fighting him anymore because he's, he's been defeated. Amen. Yes. My battle is my carnal mind. Yes. Believe it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And I, I've got other news that's going to make everybody cry. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> God's not going to totally destroy him because he was created by God. Anything created by God is not going to be destroyed Amen. because it came out of spirit. The devil came out of spirit. Yes, the devil came out of yes, spirit. Yes, he did. The thing that God is, has on his heart and always has on his heart, he wants to create man. Amen. In the likeness and the image of himself yes. so that he can have communication on the same level that he's on. Yes. And he and he started in the book of Genesis to create this man, to advance him. This word, let us make man. Yes. This word make means to advance him. Yes. Let's advance this man that's already created in the sixth day, let's advance him yeah. into the likeness and the image yeah. of myself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what he did. He took that first man, Adam, breathed immortality into him, and took him through six or seven dispensations yes. of time in order to bring him to yes. a place where he's one with him. And folks, I know what it's like to be one with God. Amen. I'm not boasting. I'm just telling you that there is a place yes. in the Lord that's holy. Yes. There's a place in the Lord that's free. Yes. There's a place where death holds been broken. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a place this world has not seen. Amen. Yes. A lot of Christians haven't seen this place. That's right. Because it's just it's 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 not a something that you can see with your natural eyes it's something that you become that you you express it's expressed through you love god is love Amen. love is the most important thing in the world love is is stronger more powerful than a, than an atomic bomb Amen. it's more powerful than anything that man can do Hallelujah. god can stop anything that he wants to stop and we need to get our eyes on him yes. and say, Lord, I'm serious. Yes. I'm not pining for days gone by. Amen. by. 
because God knew he's not going to bring another Pentecost like he did. Amen. Let it rain. He's yeah. not going to do it. No. it. It worked for a season, but it didn't make man perfect. Right. Amen. God can only do that. Amen. And uh, so here I am with a cane because of my dizziness. But uh, I just praise the Lord that it was not mal uh, malignant. Amen. Yeah. And uh, the breast cancer was, they found it early and there's doesn't seem to be any more problems there. It's like these restless legs. Yeah. I won't tell you something that I did. I, I tell you these things about me and how silly I am sometimes in order for you to thank the Lord that he's taking you a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> How many of you know my youngest son, David? Yeah. yeah. Well, he knew that I wanted to go to Hawaii, that that was my bucket list. And so he set it all up, and we got on this big plane and headed out. And uh, I saw David coming. I was standing in the aisle talking to somebody, and I saw David coming, and and he walked up, and, and uh, he had on the most beautiful maroon shirt. And I said, oh, David, you have changed shirts. It looks so pretty. I just love it. And I was just rubbing his shoulders and his chest and patting him on the back and patting him on the face. Telling him how good he looked. And he said, Well, I think I'll sit down. I said, Okay. And I sat down, I sat down there by him because our seats were together. And uh, uh, I said, Did anybody recognize you when you got on the plane? He said, No. I said, That just makes me so mad. I said, <laughs> I said, they ought to recognize you. And he just looked at me real funny and grinned. I said, you're not David, are you? He said, no. How could I not know my son? And I'm mad because the world doesn't know him. Anyway, it's good to be old. <laughs> be old and infirm. So Leslie, don't feel bad that I was considering that you might not be Leslie. I thought, well, does she have another daughter that I don't know? Put me in shock like that. <laughs> Come on, Gary. Do <laughs> what? Sit down, Gary. Oh, you come here. Sit down. Right there.
Stretch your hands this way. Let's just pray for you. Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, amen. Aren't you glad for Jesus? Yes, yes. amen. Amen. So good to be here and be back in uh, Oklahoma again. Amen. God's good. Good to be here, Alice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God's doing some great things. Amen. Yes. Amen. And uh, as I look around the room, uh, I, I want us to understand some things that God, and, and if I can just take off of what Alice and Dennis has been sharing, uh, God's moving in his own time, in his own way, in each of us the least of which we expect. We think God should move in a certain way because we're, we're bogged down by our circumstances. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that God sees things differently and understands things differently than we do. Amen. And the whole time Dennis was up here, I kept hearing that scripture in the spirit, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus, who Amen. thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Oh, yeah. And when you, and we've sliced that and diced it pretty much every which way. But he said, let this mind be in you. What, what exactly is he talking about? Your, your, how many knows your personality, everything about you is based on your mind. Mm -hmm. How you think, how you see things, how you interpret things, how you react to things. Oh, yeah. Everything everything about that is your mind. Right. And the Bible said that which is first is natural, then that which is spirit. Now this just hit me, so do what you want to with this. This is hot off the press. <laughs> I mean, it was one of the biggest things that troubles the world today is mental illness. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, uh, Dennis and Sheila have had trouble for so many years dealing with their children and their drug issue. And I remember when Jamie started coming out here just recently, and Dennis and Sheila can share this more in depth with you, but they finally got a hold of somebody after all these years that began to understand some things that gave her the proper medication that dealt with her mind. Oh, yeah. That, that, you know, and she, I remember Jamie, uh, Dennis, sharing with the, the people at various meetings. She said, people think that I take a drug person would take drugs to get high. She said, I didn't do that. I did it just to be normal. Right. Amen. And she struggled so much uh, with her mind 
to, to find peace there. And we need to understand, let this mind be in you. Well, what's God doing? He's changing the way we see, the way we think, the way we understand, the way we judge each other, because we've been judging according to the flesh. Right. Yes. yes. But God is changing us. Yes. The manifestation of these sons, the world, the, uh, Paul wrote, he said, that the whole world's crying out, waiting for this manifestation. Not somebody to glow in the dark and walk through the walls, but somebody that can be God in the earth. Amen. Think like him, act like him, and everything. This this whole thing today, as I look around the room, God is speaking a word to to all of us. If I can, because we're here, and I don't know who might we're trying to broadcast this, so I don't know who might be watching. But God's in the process of changing us to make us understand that that what you're going through, and this boy, this was made so real to me as I sat and listened to Dennis minister and and Alice share some things. What, what we don't understand is that when God speaks a word, the circumstances, Betty, don't matter. Right. Exactly right. Circumstances don't matter. Amen. Amen. When God told uh, Jonah to go to Nineveh, Jonah thought he could do all kinds of stuff. He thought he didn't have to. He thought it was up to him. He thought all of this stuff going on. But the truth of the matter is, when he was in the belly of that whale, and I like what the way Dennis kind of put this, change happened to him in the belly of the whale. Amen. Didn't happen to him in a red hot revival. Right. Oh, no. Didn't happen to him with hands laid on him or prophecy over him. Right. Or dancing in the spirit. It happened in the belly. Of, can I tell you something? Most of us, we don't understand it, but if you'll be honest and look back, Whatever has changed you in your past was, was when you were in the belly of the whale. Yes. And the belly of, when he was in the belly of what did not change what God was going to do with him. He was going to Nineveh. And when, when God spoke to Paul, who was Saul at the time, and told him, said, you're going to stand before the emperor. You're going to Rome. You're going to stand before the emperor. And I, I kind of like what, what Dennis said. You know, he got that word about about God's going to give them all these big crowds and all this kind of stuff. Isn't it funny how we interpret things the way we, you know, like. Uh, my mind goes back to when I was a young preacher in, in old Pentecost. And I'll never forget, I was just a young preacher. I hadn't been preaching for literally just a few weeks. And, and I was all excited. How many knows you want to save the world? Right. Amen. And, 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 I, and I, I was just sure, Lisa, I just knew I was going to save the world. I just knew it. And uh, uh, so there was a, 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 we were having a revival at this little church over in Dallas. And, and man, I was on fire every night. I was there, I was excited. And, and, and I, I forget the preacher's name at the time. He was a visiting evangelist. Boy, he's a firecracker. And I was enjoying him. And I'll never forget, boy, he's prophesying to people. And I was just waiting on a word from God. And I know y'all never done that. But I just knew God had to tell me some stuff so that I could get my marching orders. And sure enough, God spoke to me. He called me out one night, Gail. He called me out and he prophesied to me. And he said, son, the hand of the Lord is upon you. You're going to go a long ways in a short period of time. And I went, woo, hallelujah. <laughs> Let me go lay hands on my Cadillac. <laughs> oh, y'all never done stuff like that. <laughs> Give me a gold watch and I'll be ready to preach to the world. Oh. Little did I know what that actually meant. Right. God says, that's not the way it's going to happen because you see, back in the old Pentecostal days, in order to be anything important at all, you got you know to preach in big church and stuff. You kind of had to have a reputation. You got to hang out with the crowd. You got to you know you got, you got to be somebody. And I couldn't wait to be somebody. So what happened was I'm excited because I just know that I'm not going to have to go through 40 years of hell. I get to be a cool guy right off the bat. And and I found out what God really meant was this: I'm going to take you through 40 years of hell in just a few weeks. <laughs> Can I get a witness? <laughs> so I understand exactly. Uh, see, I didn't see things like God saw things. Right. And what God is in the process of doing, ladies and gentlemen, He is changing us from the inside out. And He's causing us to take His nature 
removing all, and, and, and you know, and, and as Dennis was sharing this, this I, I kept seeing this in my mind. Jesus told in John the 11th chapter, he told Mary and Martha, you know, he, and, and he come there, and, 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 and I really like that word that Dennis gave about being out of season. We've got too many people in season. Come on. Amen. And if you preach something in season, if you share something in season, all you're doing is recognizing what's going on. Yes. You're not preparing for anything which is come to come. On. You're just sharing what's going on. If, 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 if I come to you by the, by the anointing of the Spirit and I look at you and say, I, I see you walking through hell, uh, you, you're going to go, oh my God, that God's showing that. Well, we're all in hell. Been there. Yeah. I got to tell this story. I'm, ter I'm terrible. I, I was I was in a meeting in South Carolina years ago, and and the, the, the little uh, 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 lady that she was uh, the pastor of the church was a lady, and she comes over to me and she said, "Now, brother Gary, if you need anything, da 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 da," and she pointed out this lady, and she said, "This lady right here, her name was I don't know Mary or whatever her name was. I don't know what her name was." She said. Uh, if you need anything, talk to Sister Mary. Everything's going to be just fine. She'll get it for you, whatever, whatever. And it was like two or 300 people in this church. And, and I was okay. So I'm up ministering. Boy, I'm up just preaching. All of a sudden, I stopped beginning to prophesy. And I said, Sister Mary, she started screaming and dancing and running, going crazy. I thought, what in the name of God's wrong with her? Because all I said was Sister Mary. And the Lord spoke to me and said, she thinks I told you her name. I said, Sister, God didn't tell me that. <laughs> just like that, it just, it just unplugged. She said, stop and sit down. <laughs> so, so, so if you tell somebody, you know, so, so, so if I tell you something that you already know is going on in your life, uh, I, I'm just bearing witness of your season. Right. Amen. I'm bearing witness of the, of the fruit that you're dealing with right now. Exactly. But when the Lord said, yeah, but thus saith the Lord, and he begins to line out some things that are to come. That's out of season. Yes. Just come like on. you. There's some things out of season about to call that's about to happen to your life. You come, the Lord spoke to me when Dennis was ministering. You come for some answers today. Amen. You didn't just come because. But God says to tell you that the next three months is going to bring such a total change to your world that it's out of order right now. But God says, I'm going to do something spectacular because you've been crying yourself to sleep in some situations that nobody even knows about. But God says, I've been there in your midnight hour and I see this thing that's going on. And the heart that is broken shall be healed, saith the Lord, for I'm going to do a brand new thing in your Amen. life, honey. Amen. Hallelujah. God's going to do some new things, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because out of season, a yes. uh, priesthood is in the house. Yes. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about me. I'm just talking about this is the anointing that's in the house. Yes. We've had the anointing of Moses that has been prevalent in our churches. What is the anointing of Moses? Come on out. Come out. Yeah. Come on out of where you've been. Come out of old Bad Baptist Church. Come out of Methodist. Watch out now. Come out of Pentecost. Come, Come out of Charismatic. Look out now. Come on. Come on out of sonship. Yeah, come come on. on out of kingdom. Yeah. Come out of all of these labels that everybody is so proud to wear. And we don't realize that these labels are nothing but doctrinal differences yeah. that we look to separate ourselves with. Yeah. And we think that if somebody is more anointed or more holy or more this or more that, then we want to leave where we are and go join the next crowd so that we can be somebody else. And God says, I'm trying to get you to live above all of your differences of your doctrinal walls that you build up for your... Is this making any sense yes. to anybody? Yes. Amen. So he says, guess what? I'm raising up an, an, an out-of-season ministry that's not here to recognize, okay, you're bearing your fruit in season Come and you're on. doing good. But guess what? This is what messes us up. When we're bearing fruit and we're in season and we're not ready for what comes, God says, where our hearts are broken when the apples fall off our tree. Amen. Whenever our fruit begins to fall off as we enter the next season, we're confused and we don't know God don't love us no more. I don't understand what's going on anymore. But God says to tell you, I've got some anointings in the house that's going to speak into your world yeah. and tell you this. Is, does this make any sense? Amen. Jesus told Mary and Martha, amen, when he come up to, uh, and Lazarus was dead at this point. Remember John 11. And the Bible says that he comes up there and, and he tells them, uh, and they, they, they said, Lord, if you'd have just been here, yeah. amen. we're in season now. Yeah. 
We're in season because yes. Lazarus is dead. Right. We're in season and we recognize there's problems going on. Amen. We're in season because we, we know him as the healer, but we don't need a healing now. He's dead. Right. So we're in season. Jesus comes to them in their season and says, don't you know your brother will live again? Come on. And they're in season. And they say, Joanne, they say, oh yeah, Lord, some glad morning when this life is o'er, our brother will live again. Right. And Jesus said, you don't understand. I am yes. the resurrection. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I, that's what I'm, I'm out of season. I'm the resurrection. Yes. I've come to you in your season. I'm out of your season, but I come into it. <laughs> yes. right. now, Amen. Now, watch this. And so here's Jesus. He is the resurrection. Amen. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Yes. I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. Let's fast forward a few more chapters. What takes place suddenly? They're in the garden. For he says, I see my season's about to change. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Here comes his number of uh, uh, one disciple. Amen. It's not Peter, James, and John. His number one disciple is Judas. Right. Comes up and kisses him on his cheek. Amen. See, we think Peter, James, and John. Oh, now nobody wants to help me today. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. Remember, remember, uh, James and John, I believe it was, uh, they call them the sons of thunder. Right. Mama comes and said, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, grab my two sons and sit on your right hand and your left hand. Right. See, that's us. We're the, we're the thunder. <laughs> oh, don't make me go there. <laughs> Lord, behold. Lord, behold. Here he comes. His number one disciple. Why do you call Judas the number one disciple? For this reason. He's the one who brought the change. Yeah. Yeah. He's the one that enacted the change. Yes, he is. Amen. It wasn't Peter. Peter had revelation. Peter had revelation. Come on. Who do men say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. Ah, but only my Father has revealed this unto you. A few chapters later, Jesus said, it's my time to go. i got to go die. What happened? He said, well, bless God, that ain't going to happen. Amen. Am I telling you the truth? Yeah. So here's Peter. We, we think he's, he, no, he's not number one. He had revelation. Kind of like us. We got revelation. Yeah. Anybody here got revelation? Yeah. Nobody? <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> Two of you. Okay, I'll preach to y'all. The rest of you sit in darkness. <laughs> God spoke to me about revelation. Allison, here's what he told me. He said, I give you revelation not to preach or to share necessarily. I give you revelation to become. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. When he reveals anything to you, it's to become that. Yes, it is. If you preach it, let your life preach it. Yes. Not your words. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Oh, Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me get on with this. The word of the Lord says, amen, that a few chapters later, Judas kisses him on the cheek. Right. Amen. And still, still, here comes all the soldiers up to him. And, and they take him and they beat him. The whole time they beat him. Can I tell you something? He was still the resurrection. Yes, he was. Oh, hallelujah. He didn't feel like the resurrection. He didn't look like the resurrection. But he was the resurrection. Yes. No matter what his certain... Oh, God, somebody help me today. Some of you sitting right now in this congregation, your body's hurting so bad you don't know if you can even get up taking all the medicine you know to take. Can I tell you something? You're still the resurrection. Yeah. It don't matter how you feel. Some of you so broke you ain't got two pennies rubbed together. God says you're still the resurrection. Yeah. Amen. I'm here to tell you it don't matter the situation you're currently in. Your sons and your daughters in drugs or all kinds of problems or they're, or they're in jail or whatever else is going on. It don't matter what the world can say. See, what matters is what God sees. And what does God see? He said, let this mind be in you. Change your outlook. Change the way you look at that. You can't do it through the power of positive thinking. Amen. Is this all right? You can't do this through the power of positive thinking. 
All you got to do is think positive thoughts. Yeah. If I slap you upside the head, how positive is that? <laughs> yeah, it turns negative, all right. <laughs> turns negative. That's a little on the negative side, wasn't it? Really. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Amen. No, this thing is done only by the Father, by the visitation of the Father. And if I'm going to take it a step further and mess with you a little bit, amen, God has chosen this thing in you, in Him, before the foundation of the world. I hate to break it to you. You don't have a thing to do with it. I get a kick out of the people who says, well, bless God. I'm so glad I chose to follow the Lord. No, you didn't. You moron. You ain't got enough sense to choose. I'm trying to show you how to win friends and influence people. Oh, hallelujah. I get a kick out of these people that, that, that they got this. Well, we gentlemen, we, we have a, a right to choose. We have a free, free will. Yeah. That's what I love about God. Oh, yeah. God's been God so long. <laughs> Long before he got my boat. And here's the way God works. He lets you do something and make you think it's your idea. Yeah. And all the time it's him. Sure. Kind of like Jonah. God said, you're going to Nineveh? Jonah, I'm not going to Nineveh. I hate those guys. <laughs> if you study the history of, of Jonah and the Ninevites, there was pure hatred amongst yes, the people. They hated each other. If somebody died, they said, praise the Lord. <laughs> so God told him, he said, go to Nineveh. I don't want to go to Nineveh. We know the story. They pitched him overboard. Well, guess what? After three days in the belly as well, he got revelation knowledge. <laughs> you know what? I think I'll go. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll choose. It's my idea. I'm going to go. God says, okay. It's like some of us. We don't realize God. God, God let you think it's your idea to follow him. He let you think it's your idea and it's not your idea. But he says, okay. And here's where we are. Here's Jesus now. He sees this thing must, must be accomplished. The Bible, we know the story. The Bible said they took him and they beat him until he was bloody. Can I tell you something? He didn't, no doubt, feel like the resurrection. But he was. Right. right now, some of you don't feel like the resurrection. Right. Oh, my. My mind goes back to David. He was uh, uh, a kid, 16, 18 years old, somewhere along in there. Whenever uh, 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 they went, Samuel went and anointed him. Remember that? King. Got a king among the sons. Went and anointed him. God called him and he went and anointed him. Guess what? When he came out of there, he didn't feel like a king. When he fought the lion and the bear, he didn't feel like a king. When he killed Goliath, he didn't feel like a king. But he was the king the whole time. Amen. Some of you don't understand. God's hand has been upon you for divine purposes from before your mama gave birth to you. Some of you wonder why you're, you're, you're Robin, you wonder why sometimes your steps are ordered the way that you are. And I know you come from a royal lineage in the ministry. God says to tell you the word that's in you. I uh, have placed there from the foundation. You're going to begin to raise up with a sure anointing. And begin to speak a word beyond where that you have been going. Amen. And I don't even know where you go. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you folks, get ready. God's about to startle some of you. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Just when some of you thought you're comfortable, like what Dennis said, uh, like Esther. Some of you think just you're comfortable. You're comfortable uh, uh, <coughs> with your perfume baths. And you're comfortable because you're separated and you're not hanging around with a crazy old church crowd. Huh? Mordecai and his bunch. You, you, you know, you, you just soon ignore them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Some of y'all scared to be hanging out with kingdom folks. <laughs> I don't blame you. Oh. I do my best to not. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, that God is about to shake some things that can be shaken. Yeah. Oh. He's about to rattle some things. I'm here to tell you, get ready. 
the foundations of the sons of God is being shaken. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Well, it's time that we begin to realize, and I'm going to tell you something. What we're sharing now, I really like the way that Dennis, you know, what we're sharing right now, I think Dennis called it the white of the page instead of the ink on the page. I like that. Amen. What we're sharing now is really totally out of season. If you want to build a church, this is not the message. If you want to win friends, this is not the message. They think you're crazy. How dare you think you can move beyond grace? I had some people tell me that. How dare I can move beyond grace? And I said, I'm not moving beyond anything. Amen. All I'm doing is realizing that God's got... And, 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 and common sense. And this is common sense. Okay, stay with me a minute. Let's just get flat out carnal. For some of y'all, that's a small move. Look at the one next to you and say he's talking about you. Yeah. I don't know. Take your, any Bible, any version of the Bible. I don't know how much you've got there, how many pages are there. It doesn't matter. You know, you might have half a thousand or whatever pages are there. And yet, yet that same book, whatever version, that same book tells you that the things that Jesus has said and done, if they had been written, the worlds could not contain it. Right. Yeah. Is that, is, am I telling you the truth? Yeah. yeah. So, there's more not in the book Come on. than what in the book. Yes. Yes. Come on. Am I telling you the truth? Yes. Absolutely. So, if I'm going to limit myself to that handful of scribble there that Jesus plainly said, search the scriptures. Go ahead. Yeah. For in them you think you have eternal life. But they are only they which testify of me and still you wouldn't come to me. I'm going to say something here. God has a royal priesthood that he has determined from his own heart before the foundation of the world that he's preserved until now. Right. Amen. We've had no choosing in the matter. We had no understanding in the matter. Amen. None of us have a clue. That's the scary part. Right. All we know is that once we meet someone that's of like spirit, we're joined with them. Yes. I like what Dennis said. I just know you. Right. Yeah. I just know you. Exactly. Oh my. God is about to unveil, take off some covering of this priesthood. Yes. I call him, I call him Melchizedek. Right. Now please understand Melchizedek, we try to make an order of it. But right. if you remember, God spoke through him out of the book of Psalms. He said, thou art a priest forever after the order, after the similitude, after the likeness of Melchizedek. He didn't say it was Melchizedek. He said it's like the likeness of it. Well, what's the likeness of it? Without beginning of days, without ending of the days. Without father, without mother. I have no genealogy. Oh God, does anybody make any sense yeah. with it? With, I have no genealogy that I can look to. Some of us look to it like in my natural genealogy, I can tell you, I come from, my dad was a preacher, my grandpa was a preacher, my great grandpa, I come from all kinds of preachers all the way through the Methodist thing, way back, way back, way back, a uh, uh, circuit rider. I can go back all that stuff and people say, well, bless God, no wonder, no, I can I tell you something? God has dealt with me, I can't claim any of that stuff. Amen. For he said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a Amen. New creature. That word new creature in the Greek means a species never having before existed. I have no past. I have nothing I can look at. I have nothing I can claim. I have nothing I can base what I say or think on. Everything about me is brand spanking new. And as I look at you ever looked at a newborn baby? Amen. They don't sit there and tell you what they like and don't like. Amen. They don't sit there and start spouting off. Amen. E equals MC squared. Amen. They don't sit there and spout off all that kind of nonsense. Honey, they're as innocent and they're just as happy as they can be. Amen. Waiting on somebody else to make this it. Can I tell you something? I see the sons of God in this hour getting ready. We're sitting here. We don't know what to do. We don't know what we like. We don't know what we don't like. <laughs> All we know, amen, is that we're here. Right. We are here. <laughs> 
You ask that brand new baby. Ask that brand. Find somebody brand new baby and ask them. You a boy or a girl? They don't know. You like hamburgers or not? <laughs> What's your nationality? What language do you speak? Come on, tell me. Talk to me, baby. I know you only been here a few hours. Come on. This is the sons of God in this hour. Yeah. Amen. We don't identify with anybody Amen. or anything. Amen. Amen. We can look back. Some of us say, like, like Dennis was talking, like I just shared. We come from this re organization of a religion of something or other. But that's not where we draw our lineage. That's not our bloodline. That's not where we are. Amen. God says, get ready. The whole world is crying and they're begging for somebody to take their place in God Amen. and begin to raise up and show forth the nature of the Father. Amen. Don't show me a scripture. Don't try to justify anything. Amen. Show me. Yes. The nature of my Father. Amen. Let me see Him manifest. Yeah. Amen. Jesus told Mary and Martha. He said, don't you know your brother will live again? Why? Because he came knowing only one thing. I'm resurrection. That's all I know. That's right. That's all I know. I'm resurrection. Uh, are you, uh, and here, watch out now. I'm trying to quit, but boy, this is getting bigger than me. <laughs> Too many of us identify with Mary's boy. Right. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. God didn't raise up Mary's boy. Oh, we no. lost you there. No. Come on now. Is this okay? Yes. Remember when he told he he, he told her at the at, at, on the cross. Remember what he told her? Woman, behold thy son. John, behold thy mother. I, I'm not anything to you anymore. Matter of fact, his very first miracle, his very first miracle, we call it the, 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 when he turned the water into wine at the marriage feast. And what did he tell his woman? Woman, what am I to do with thee? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. There's some changes. Folks, I'm here to tell you there's some changes that are coming. Praise that, the Lord. That's going to surprise us. And it's not going to be what we were hoping for. Amen. It's going to be greater than that. Yes. Greater than that. Yes. When, when Jesus was dying on the cross, he didn't feel like resurrection. Mm -hmm. When he's hanging there. And he says, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Surely he didn't feel like resurrection. Right. right. Amen. You can't look at your circumstances. Whatever you're dealing with. I don't care how long you've been dealing with it. Amen. Gail, the Lord spoke to me today and he said, I'm removing this thing off of your shoulders. I'm removing it. Amen. I'm going to lift this off and you're going to feel free as air. Because I have need of thee. I am loosing you this day, saith the Lord. I'm releasing you from all natural connections. I'm loosening you. He's mine. He's mine. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Man. People, I, I'm excited because God's doing some things. We've been, we've been waiting for it, praying for it, hoping for it. it scares us to death, but it's here. Good to see the Kyoto Bunch. That's what I call y'all. I, I guess you're still Kyoto Bunch. I don't know. Good to see you guys. Always love seeing you guys. God's going to do some great things there. Get ready for a fresh new word that I see a wind getting ready to blow in that little group. God's getting ready to blow some things. How many knows when God blows some things, it's like a wind blowing through. It blows and clears the air. Amen. There's some things that need to be cleared out. There's some old feelings. There's some old dreams. There's some old hopes that need to be cleared out. Amen. And God wants to do some fresh things. Oh, hallelujah. You've been faithful over a few things. And this, I got to tell you, I, I so appreciate Dennis giving you that word, my brother. And I, and, and I appreciate you, the music. The Lord just spoke to me as I looked over here a minute ago and said, you're going to write some songs. And I don't know if you write, don't write. I don't know if you care to write. But I see some songs in you that God is going to begin to write fresh new songs as God wants to bless his people. Amen. I bless you, my brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.
Man, what a day. What a day. We're in a great time, folks. Yes, we are. We're in a great time. You know, when Jesus came out of the tomb on the third day, watch this. He no longer said, I am the resurrection. He didn't say that. You know why? Because he was. The fact that he moved the stone himself and came out himself said it all. We're trying to declare some things, hoping it happens. I just, it's a good, I don't want to quit with this. It's a good thing we weren't there in John the 11th chapter, meeting Mary and Martha. Don't you know your brother will live again? Yeah, someday. Well, I really hope I'm the resurrection, so let's try it out. <laughs> oh, my. He told him, show you, show you how positive he was that he was a resurrection. He walks up there and he says, fellas, roll the stone away. Yeah. Move it out of the way. Lord, don't you know by now he stinketh. All right. Jesus didn't say, hmm, I didn't think of that. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible said he cried with a loud voice. I, I, I appreciate, appreciate the scripture there that said, uh, the professional mourners were standing there. Oh. Yeah. Oh, God help us. Some of you think that's your calling? <laughs> the professional mourner? <laughs> I don't, I'll share this real quick. I, I don't know if you know this or not, but some may, not know, this, some may know this, but in, in the custom of the day, uh, they had professional mourners, and you could hire mourners to come and mourn you're dead. And uh, the way it worked was this. If you were poor, you might only have one or two. And they'd be going, oh, man, poor Joe. He was a good guy. I really like him. God bless him. But if you were rich, you had a bunch of them. And they were going, oh. Okay, funeral's over. All right, see you later. <laughs> Some of us were professional mourners. The Bible said that they were weeping, and the Bible said, Jesus, John eleven thirty five, 35, the longest scripture in the Bible, Jesus wept. Some of y'all didn't even get that. I'm wasted here. <laughs> Jesus wept, and they said, Oh, how he loved him. See how he cried. Because they were professional mourners. They thought he was there to join them. Right. The Bible said he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And this is, this is what God is speaking to, some, some priestly order in this hour. I'm raising you up not to be a professional mourner, not to be one of the crowd. People are going to think you're crazy, but you're going to manifest. Yes. Not talk about, you're going to manifest. Too many people talk about love has none. Right. Yeah. You got that right. You got to talk about it. You don't have it. Is this okay? Yeah. I really will quit. Too many people, they'll talk about love. Oh, oh, we're sons of God and kingdom people and we preach reconciliation. We preach love. And, and I will reconcile you and love you as long as they're on my terms. Exactly. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. True. I'll let you in my camp if you behave. Right. If you don't, I'm going to call down the thunder. Be like Elijah, call down lightning. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, I'll get off of that. I'm losing my amens. You love the Lord today. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. God bless you.
try to poke it or you oh, just want to turn around? I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> I'll hang on to the pulpit. There you go. <laughs> well, how many of you are enjoying yourself? Yeah. 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 I appreciate everybody that came out. And uh, do you want to have an afternoon service or not? Some of them have to get home before dark. They can't see how to drive in the dark. We've got some food back there, don't we, Susie? Yes, yes. You want to go home after you eat or? Probably. I'm going to have to go. You're going to have to go? I'm going to have to leave after we eat. Yeah. You know, I mean, so why don't, don't we that? just, uh, we had a good service and yes. just wait till next month. Hopefully we'll have more coming. Okay. Um, how many of you appreciate the church letting us use yes. it? Yes. Yeah. What would you ask for any better? We've got musical instruments, got a beautiful building. Comfortable. I appreciate using it. Amen. We, we uh, want to take up an offering for the church um, to help them stay open. We. Um, Amen. I don't know how to, how to operate the money here. <laughs> we want to. Do something for the speakers too. At least buy their gas. I, I tell you what, um, let's take up an offering for the. Somebody, Gail, help me out here. Well, Russ will help you here. Russ is helping you. <laughs> Give me your money. <laughs> you lose something. Or else. <laughs> If uh, some of you ladies were concerned that you missed some, this is being live recorded, so you can go to Gary's Facebook page or YouTube channel and watch it from the beginning. Oh, I forgot all about this. Everything you say is live. Everything you say is live. Hi, Russ. Russ. I'm going to go over here, buddy. Yeah. 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 That was very prophetic, though. Anybody else? All right, still my line. Yeah. This is so good. I wish y'all could just stay with us. <laughs> Cheryl go. Get the stuff ready. They're in the kitchen. Somebody go get Cheryl. I want to send her home. I know you're hungry and tired, but I want to send us home. I'm old and hungry. <laughs> one thing, this next move that God is bringing forth in the earth will not be defiled. Amen. It cannot be defiled. You cannot defile love. Man defiled his 
Passover feast. Amen. Brought it down to an earthy level. Same thing with Pentecost. Yes. Yes. And we remember Pentecost with great fondness because it was a feast of provision. Right. Whatever you had need of, God provided. And he still does. Amen. But it was defiled by man. Man got rich on it. Right. Exactly right. This thing that God's doing now will never, ever be defiled. Amen. Because it's in the likeness of the image of God. Amen. And don't worry anymore. He's got it all under control. He's working it out just like he's worked everything else out in your life. You're blessed of the Lord. Me too, Effie. And of course, Betty. Hallelujah. This song was written by my husband, Jonathan. And I think everybody probably knows him. We sung it several times. Cheryl here? Yeah. She's behind me. Okay. Ready to go. <clears throat> Give me a key, Cheryl. rejoicing in the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 For I has not seen nor ear heard the things that I have prepared for you, the way 
is hard, the way is long, but know that the reward is great at the end. You're running a race, and you're running a race to win. Oh, you win right. this race, for I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. I'm taking you to places you don't know of. Don't struggle against what's happening in you, but just know that it's happening because my will and my purpose is being worked out in you. I'm raising you up into a new way, into a new place, for you are a new creature. You are no longer the same. You are no longer that that is spat upon by man and accused by Satan, but you are my child. I have born you, I have reared you, and I'm taking you into a new heavenly abode wherein I dwell. Hallelujah. of wisdom, words that, that you don't understand how they could know it because they've never heard it, but they, a little child shall lead them. A little child shall lead them. Hallelujah. 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 Let's all stand. And John and Cindy wanted to be here today and snowed and they couldn't get out of their yard. And uh, some more people were supposed to come, but sickness and different things happened. Kelly, are you doing better? Okay. Oh, anybody else something to say? Well, let's go eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can wait until.